Hello everybody, my name is Walter and today I want to show you how you can build and design a very compact and very simple multiple piston extender and well let's show you just two examples. Here in the front I have a true piston extender in a version that can be hidden in a three thick floor or ceiling and here I have a version that can be hidden in a three thick wall and they are essentially working on the same principle. All that's changed in between is that I took here the four and the two layers here and flipped them by 90 degrees to the side. So everything I will later show you an example of this upright version can also apply, uh, apply to this one here. But anyway, so let's show you a little demonstration. So at the front here we have a triple piston extender and all I have to do is press this button here, a uh, lever here, and then it extends and then if I flip the lever again it retracts completely. As you can see it's a very fast design and now let's show you the, this thing here with 13 pistons in total and as you can see here it works without any additional control circuitry, so all you see here is all that you need for this design to work and it works also in the opposite direction of course. So this is a very compact and easy design which makes this also rather cheap. The only disadvantage of this design are two things and this is on one hand that you need slime blocks in between here, so if you hide this in a wall or a ceiling, you will need some immovable blocks besides the sides of it. And the second thing is that um, the whole thing here is if you compare it to a normal piston extender, one and a half times as long, so 50% longer than the normal version due to the additional slime blocks in between here. But, and this is the upside, it is really simple to add pistons here or subtract pistons here so you can make this with as many pistons as you need. There's a very simple rule to follow to design the entire thing. More about this a bit later but this is one advantage. Then you don't need any very complex and clunky control circuitry. All you need is this line of redstone at the bottom. Then what's also possible is if you need to invert the reaction to the input this is no problem since this thing, thing here is only triggered by the change of the state of the input. So if you have this in the retracted state, then block it, for example in this case by giving it certain blocks to push, and then you can just invert the input without it reacting, and then you can unblock it, and then you have inverted the reaction to the input state. So very simple to modify this in this case. So that's another advantage and that's basically the essence of the thing here. So now let's talk about the required resources. Essentially it's a modular design. As you can see here, each module is basically one sticky piston, a slime block and an observer, plus three blocks below with either two redstone dust and one repeater or two repeaters and one redstone dust. The places where you need one redstone repeater or two redstone repeaters you can uh, distinguish through a certain rule I will talk later about. But with that out of the way let's go directly to the required resources. So in this chest I placed down the required resources for a double piston extender, triple piston extender, quadruple piston extender and so on until a ten piston extender. And as you can see here there's a very simple rule to follow. So of course you need uh, so the corresponding number of sticky pistons, then the same number of observers, one slime block less, and then if you take the number of sticky pistons minus one and multiply it with three, you have the number of normal blocks you need. This is also the length of the entire thing. So in this case with 13 pistons this would be 36 blocks long. And then for every piston you add you need either 
two redstone dust and one repeater, or one repeater and uh, one redstone dust and two repeaters. And the places where you need only one re uh, redstone dust and two repeaters is the fourth sticky piston, the seventh, the tenth, the thirteenth, and so on, so on, every third sticky piston, essentially. And that's basically all of the resources. So now it's time to first show you how to build a double, triple and quadruple piston extender. And then I will talk about the actual rule you can follow to design a piston extender with how many pistons you ever need. And in this case I will take this 13 piston extender here as an example. Okay, so let's start with the double piston extender. For this, start with three blocks in a row like that, then put down two rest and dust like that, and repeat in this direction on three ticks. Then two observers on top like that. Finally grab a sticky piston, place it here, then a slime block there, and another sticky piston here. And that's the entire thing. So this is essentially the point where we power the entire thing, and then, as you can see, the whole thing works just like it's supposed to. As you can see there. Okay, now let's make this a true piston extender. For this, first let's add three blocks at the bottom here, then three redstone dust down like that, followed by a repeat on three ticks there, and the rest we leave as it is. Then finally place a third observer, followed by another slime block and our third sticky piston. And that's the true piston extender done, as you can see here. Now to turn this into a quadruple piston extender. Again, let's start at the bottom here. Now we have our three redstone dust, followed by two repeat dust on three ticks, and the rest we leave as it is. Then again we grab another observer, place it up towards there, slime block and sticky piston. And with that we have our quadruple piston extender. Finally, finished. Now with that out of the way, let's get straight to how to design longer piston extenders. In this case I want to go with a piston extender with in total 13 sticky pistons. So for this I start again with a row of blocks, and this row of blocks is exactly 36 blocks long. So uh, this is the 13 minus 1 times 3, and from there on I basically repeat a three block pattern, which is just two redstone dust and a repeat at the beginning, and this I repeat until I reach the very end, and then we will have to later on make a few little modifications, but more about this in a moment. Then once I have built this basic setup, it's time to place the observers first. For this start with two observers at the end here, with no gap in between, and then all other with a one wide gap in between until we reach the necessary number of observers. So now with the observers placed, it's time to modify this setup at the bottom. For this, let's go to the front here and first replace this repeater with a redstone dust. And on the other end, this redstone dust with a repeat on three ticks. Then Look for every place where an observer is directly above a repeater and replace the following redstone dust with another repeat on three ticks. So this is basically every third of those little patterns here at the bottom. I can actually already place a lever here. So with that out of the way, all that's left is placing an alternating pattern of pistons and sl uh, slime blocks on top until you have the entire thing done. And that's actually the entire thing completely designed. So let's just put up the blocks to the front to see if everything works, and then let's give it some power. And as you can see now, this whole play, uh, thing here has been transported 
for 13 blocks and now let's just make this in the reverse. And as you can see the retraction also works. So now we have quite simply finished a multi-piston uh, extender with a total number of 13 pistons. So that was how you can build and design this simple and very compact type of multiple piston extenders. I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial and well, see ya!